r slash ask reddit. Redditors that host their home on air. What has been your worst experience with a guest? I used to travel a lot for work and I would put my apartment up on air while I was away. My apartment has a bunch of closets and drawers which I used to leave empty and at my guest's disposal. However there is one closet in the bedroom which I kept locked cause it is where I keep my personal belongings. One time a guest left a bad review saying that the place had no storage space which I was very confused about until I got home and saw my closet. Dude had tried to open it using brute force. The door was almost pulled off its hinges and the wood was chipped in some places. The door in question had two padlocks and the perfectly usable closet on the opposite wall wasn't a shade. We are live-in hosts, so we are present while guests stay in our spare room. A guest arrived and immediately announced that they had shit himself during their journey. They then marked us down for cleanliness. Mate, you shit yourself. Also a guest who found a pair of my flip flops in a wardrobe that they should not have opened, then shit over the bathroom floor, ruining my favorite flip flops in the process. Also, a guest who went out drinking for 10 hours before checking in, meaning I had to collect them from the taxi, put them in bed in the recovery position, check on them. When I woke up for work, then called the taxi company on their behalf, when it turned out they'd lost their phone. Rented out to a group of 4 girls. Turns out they were going partying every day during their stay. I get called one day at 5am. It's the guard from my building telling me there's a passed out girl in the lobby's couch, puking and pissing herself. None of her friends had gone back to help her. Ruined the couch obviously. The next day they send me a message again. Another one of the girls had sprinted to the building stairs and also pissed herself. A friend of mine rented to a girl who was convinced that there were cameras hidden all around the unit. She dismantled the lighting fixtures, picture frames, met some cabinets, remote controls, etc. Edit. This occurred in 2015. They were live-in hosts renting out the main part of their home. She also depotted plants, removed smoke detectors, hid all of the refrigerator magnets, and destroyed her cell phone. They were compensated by Airbnb. Thank you, Reddit, for an excuse to reach out to an old friend. I worked in a call center that handles some of Ebden's customer service. So, one guest murdered two people in the host's home and got arrested there. Another guest was from a culture that eats iguanas and barbecued up a 7 year old girl's pet iguana to serve to the family as thanks for hosting him. Another guest filled a mug with human shit and left it in the host's microwave. You really lose all faith in humanity working in customer service call centers. Editing to at Ebden requires photo evidence for all host complaints. And guess who is the first to see them? The initial customer service agent, who may only be on their first or second day taking calls. And the iguana man was forced to pay for both a new barbecue for the family and a replacement iguana. A guy I work with told this story, how he hired a maid though a referral from his friend. She was great apparently, and asked to stay there a couple times, when he was gone. After he agreed to let her stay a few weeks, when it wasn't being rented however, she ghosted him. He ended up calling the cops and they checked up on her. She was there and although nervous, everything seemed normal. She later got a hold of him and asked to stay longer. He said no, clean it and get out. He comes back randomly to his house at 5am a few days later to someone sleeping in his downstairs room with dirty dishes and cigarette butts everywhere. Ends up it's this maid's heroin addicted husband. He had been using it as a flop house and drug den. This guy escorted the husband out by gunpoint pantsless. The place was trashed downstairs, but apparently perfectly clean still upstairs. His TV was stolen, but the husband brought it back and left it in the driveway, so he didn't get charged with theft. Apparently there was little he could do about the free stay the husband took advantage of. Not my story, but a friend of mine's. He has an apartment in London, an urban area with dense houses and population. The apartment he hosted has this window facing Main Street which people tend to assume it's non-see-through but it's not. So the guy who stayed in it decided to sit in front of that naked and had a few beers, overlooking the great view. He must have fallen asleep or something and everyone passing by the road just had to see this poor creature. It was all on Snapchat at the time I recall. LMAO. Edit. This has really blown up so let me clarify a few things. The area I refer to is in the context of where the apartment is, and not the whole of London in general. 
In that sense, the population per square kilometers here would be extremely high. He sat on a couch, right in front of the see-through window to to have his beers, just like anyone would do. The window used to be non-see-through until it had sustained some damage from a nearby construction site, forcing them to repair immediately without thorough checking. This is where the whole new feature of see-through was born. Lastly, this incident at the time was overshadowed by another weird event in London called the Naked Bike Day. You can look up what this is, please only above 18. I'm still under the impression that he may have come to London to take part in this event and perhaps assumed people of London are more tolerable towards nudity. Thanks. My wife and I were hosts for about a year to make ends meet. We had just moved to a new town so she could attend grad school. Guests had full access to the second floor while we lived on the first, met a lot of cool people, and ended up getting super host status. Last guests we ever had were an older couple that had traveled a lot. They seemed fine, and we had a nice conversation and they seemed fine with the accommodations. Keep in mind up until this point we had never gotten less than 5 stars from dozens of guests. Later that night I was at my job, bartending busy evening and homeboy rolls up saying he needs to talk with me outside. I hurry out trying to accommodate him and also get back to my busy shift. He proceeds to lay into me at my place of work about how our space wasn't up to urban standards and they won't be staying there and some friends found them another place to stay that night. I was confused but okay sure bud I'll give you the full refund you're asking for. He goes on his way. We refund everything we had gotten from them. Ebn did not refund the taxes and fees for their own terms and conditions. I think his main complaint ended up being a spider web under the bed and that there wasn't a cup stairs. Mountain town on the east coast of US in the summer. It was warm, but there were fans, and it wasn't unbearable. I can understand why he'd want to stay somewhere else though. Anyways we think it's all behind us, and my wife and I embark on a cross country road trip a few days later to check out the country and go see her family on the west coast. First day the guy starts blowing us up through ebb and messaging saying he didn't get all his money back and to send him the rest. We had returned all the money we got. We told him to take up the rest with ebb and that we couldn't help him. He was flipping out saying we were bad at business and there were other avenues to get him his money back like Venmo and some other crazy stuff to the point we had to contact Ed and to take care of it so he would stop contacting us. He basically wanted us to pay him for taking away our opportunity to make some money off other guests that weekend and for him to insult us and our home. It was a crazy stressful situation at the beginning of a long trip and influenced us to find a room at instead of continuing with Ed and hosting. We also had a dude and his girlfriend who were probably in their late 40s get absolutely hammered, come back around midnight, and she was throwing up in the yard while he laid on our living room floor with our dog talking junk about his girlfriend and asking us for weed. They were alright, but left about 40 empty cans up in the room for me to clean up. I hosted for a few years as a super host and frankly I had lovely guests. Very cool, intelligent, well-traveled, interesting people from all over the world. They were all pretty tidy to and considerate. The only annoying thing was people who talked way too much. Normally, people would exchange pleasantries and we chit chat for a bit, which is totally fine and welcome. But, every once in a while, I'd get a guest who talked non-stop from the time they got in until they went to bed. The rental suite was fantastic, like its own separate apartment fully stocked with everything I would want if I were a guest. And yet, there were a few people who had to hang out on my floor and talk 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 talk. When I got an over talker, sometimes I would hide when I heard them coming, so they'd go ahead to their floor. BC I just could not stand someone talking at me from 7pm until 11pm. My mum did this. She had some people from out of country come stay. They moved the furniture around. Swapped in most mattresses, left a massive pile of dishes in the kitchen. The bathroom was all buggered, and they must have been cooking and smashing clams or oysters shelling, and around the BBQ outside. I went over to help my mum out a little after work for a bit, but it was a two day minimum clean up job she had to do. Mum even had to bring in a cleaner lady to belp as well. Needless to say, the people who stayed didn't get their deposit back, and got a file reported on them. Not a host, but I stayed at an M that rented two rooms. I was in bed, and here the other guest, a man and women, return. 
They are loud and drunk, but nothing crazy. About 10 minutes later I hear what I thought was them having sex, but then quickly realize it's someone getting hit. The host and I both hear this. The host starts knocking on the door, asking what's going on and to open the door. The woman opens the door and her lip is split wide open. She's bleeding all down her shirt. The guy is in the room, but runs out with a backpack and leaves. He's taken both of their cell phones and wallets. The police show up and everyone gives statements. They found him walking down the road, and he found different accommodations at the police station. I slept fine. The room was Harry Potter themed, so I still left 5 stars. A bit late to the party, but I have two. One dude stole my trimmer. This other guy took the cake though. When I took him the second key to the apartment that his mother needed, he opened the door slightly ajar and only extended his hand, palm facing up, to receive the key. Didn't want to shake my hand. Sent me messages complaining to me that drawers in the bathroom were full of personal stuff. One was full of items that we purposefully leave for guests to use, including new pads, soaps, toothbrushes. He was annoyed by this and said I'll just move this to one of the bedside tables in the master bedroom shall I, which is also full anyway. There, we leave blocks and pens for guests to use, as well as reading material like The Economist or Guides to the City. This also annoyed him. He also complained about food that we leave for guests to partake of and be welcomed by. Upon leaving, guy leaves a massive scathing review including hot takes like the linens and parts being worn out and needing replacement. They are not and they don't. They're also top of the line. Says the apartment was dirty upon entering. It wasn't. It was thoroughly clean before his arrival, as it is before every guest's arrival. He concludes by complaining the taxi ripped him off. I'm guessing the insinuation is that I was in cahoots with the taxi company? I don't know. His mother was nice though. I often wonder how parents who give birth to fucking idiots feel about said fucking idiots. I'm embarrassed to say that I was not the host in this story. Me and my mate went out on a pub crawl in Prague during our gap year. I don't enjoy clubbing and the last venue on the crawl was a club. So I cut slightly earlier than my mate around 1am I got back into our apartment and went to bed. I was woken up by my friend at 4am and the entire kitchen was flooded. Not even exaggerating there was like a fucking inch of water lining the floor, spewing rapidly out of a broken overhead pipe. I asked him WTF happened and he claimed he had woken up standing in it. Being unfamiliar with the house I didn't know where the choke point in the pipe was to cut it off. We called the guy who owned the place which was painstakingly slow given the time. We managed to get through to a family member who then contacted him. He arrived about 15 minutes later in which time the water issue has become even worse. We had sealed off the room using a heap of towels to minimize the water leaving the kitchen as it had tile floors while the rest of the house was hardwood but this made it accumulate to about ankle height. The kitchen also had a sunken floor. Up until about 6 or 7 we were using pots to clear the indoor swimming pool from what used to be the kitchen. I didn't look like it had done a horrendous amount of damage once we were finished but I imagine the water seeped through the floor and into the walls causing all sorts of damage. What makes it worse is that it was a third floor apartment. My friend being the one who originally found it told the Airbnb property owner that it was like that when he woke up but later told me that, although he can't remember it, he thinks what must have happened is he'd wandered in from the club blackout drunk and tried to do a pull up on the pipe. That said though he wasn't wet when he woke me so who knows what happened. I felt really bad for the host. This is a long one, sorry. This story was a long time ago. I'd like to preface this by saying that we generally have good reviews and kind guests who don't have any problems agreeing to our three rules. Close the gate, try not to come upstairs before 10am and after 8pm, and notify us if you are coming upstairs. These two girls stayed in our basement, seemed like your typical uni students. They told us about their yoga retreat and made jokes upon arriving before we showed them how to close and lock the gate so our dogs were safe. They said they understood, closed and opened the gate a few time properly and went downstairs. The next morning my mother let our dogs outside not thinking much of it. About 30 minutes go by and the dogs haven't asked to come back in yet so she goes to check on them and they aren't in our yard. She goes to check the gate. It's wide open. 
one of our dogs is super easy to catch when he gets out because he immediately goes to the front porch and waits for my mom to let him in. Our other dog is a whole different story. She is a rescue with severe trauma and no trust in strangers. She will run like a maniac until she sees either me or my mom which makes her very difficult to catch. We eventually got both dogs inside and told the guests to close the gate when they got back. Next morning I'll let them out for a second, but then I know that I'll just be safe and check the gate, it is once again open. Our rescue dog has already bolted out the gate and down the street. She hadn't gotten far, so I just went through the alley to get in front of her and got her back inside. I was a little pissed at this point. I closed the gate and left a note on it that read please close gate with simple instructions on how to close in case they had forgotten. It's around 9 p.m. when they get back. I wasn't exactly going to sleep yet but I was turning of the downstairs lights and getting water when they come upstairs. Our hour after they are not supposed to yelling about how I need to get my head out of my ass. It is now to adults screaming at a teenager because they couldn't follow one of the three rules we have. I'm more than a little piss now but I try to remain calm and explain that we have to keep our dogs safe. They calm down after a while, agree to close the gate and go downstairs. The next morning I come downstairs around 6 in the morning to find the girls had left the gate wide open and tore up my note. I was mad but I just closed the gate and let the dogs out. It was the day they were going to leave anyway so I figured that I'd just put up with them until they left. Most of that day was actually normal and uneventful, they just left until I went downstairs to clean up. They had totally reached the place, took all the dishes off the shelf and put them on the floor, took all of the books out of the bookcase, poured coffee on the counter and turned furniture upside down. They even hid the remotes. It took me forever to clean and I'm still salty about it to this day. I'd like to add my favorite guest story to balance this out a bit. Basically the guests had a kid, 7-8, said kid comes upstairs at about 3 a.m. to be greeted by me sitting on the kitchen floor, eating pizza rolls. Her mom came to get her and apologized profusely. They were super nice and just went back downstairs for the night. TLDR, guests left the gate open multiple times. After being asked to close it, trashed the place in spite for being asked to close the gate. Man, I hate people 